I love the outdoors and backpacking, but when the leaves change and the temperatures drop, I start to get a little worried about being cold and uncomfortable out on my trips. Today I want to share with you guys the gear that I bring and the strategies I use in order to take my summer backpacking into the fall while staying warm, comfortable, and having fun. We're going to start off with what I think is the most important aspect, and that's your sleep system. If you're unable to sleep because you're super cold, you're going to have a terrible trip. My favorite way in order to supplement your summer sleep system is to get an overquilt. So this is my personal favorite and it's the Enlightened Equipment Apex Enigma Synthetic Quilt. And having the condensation collect in a synthetic material is beneficial for two reasons. First of all, synthetic material does not get affected by moisture as much as down. When down gets wet, it just loses its loft and all of its insulative properties. Synthetic, that doesn't happen. As well, synthetic material dries a lot faster. So if you do have a sunny time or some way to dry your overquilt, then you're going to be able to do that a lot easier with a synthetic material versus a down material. This is the 50 degree synthetic quilt. Synthetic doesn't compress as much as down, so 50 degrees is kind of I think the sweet spot for compressibility and weight. And I've combined this with my 20 degree down quilt from Enlightened Equipment and taken that system down to below zero degrees Fahrenheit. So you can get into really cold temperatures combining two quilts, especially with one synthetic. Another way that you can supplement your summer sleep system is with a sleeping bag liner. So this is a fleece liner made by Sea to Summit. You just stick this inside of your sleeping bag. You can also use it with a quilt as well. Just sleep inside of it and then have your quilt over top of you. If you have the budget, and this is probably the easiest option and something that allows you to kind of dabble into winter camping a little bit more, you can just get a straight up warmer sleeping bag or quilt. So this is a sleeping bag that I just picked up, the Sea to Summit Spark, and it goes, it has a comfort rating of minus nine degrees Celsius. I think the limit rating goes down below minus 10 degrees Celsius. Very warm sleeping bag. I just used it last night actually. And the nice thing about having a dedicated warm fall sleeping bag is if you wanna start getting into winter backpacking and camping, then you can combine this with the other two options that we talked about in order to stay warm in winter time. If you live up where I am in the Canadian Rockies or somewhere where it gets pretty cold, then you could get an equivalently rated quilt and probably get away with using that through spring, summer, and fall because quilts are so versatile. A little bit more versatile than sleeping bags because you zip up the sleeping bag and then you're kind of cocooned in. Whereas a quilt, you can kind of stick a leg out, stick an arm out, and they're a little bit more versatile for managing your body temperature. The other important aspect of a sleep system is your sleeping pad. And I have here the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT sleeping pad. I like having a sleeping pad with an R value of over 4.5 for fall camping. And the Etherlite XT has an R value over six. So it should keep you pretty warm unless you run very, very cold throughout the fall and maybe even a little bit into the winter time. If you don't wanna pick up a dedicated warmer sleeping pad, then you can grab a foam pad and then put that underneath your summer sleeping pad. So if I was using the Sea to Summit Etherlite XT Insulate, which has an R value of 3.2, then I could grab a foam pad. This is the one from Decathlon that works very well. And it bumps up my R value for my sleeping pad by at least one, probably around 1.5. So I can get up into that 4.5 R value range. If you're going fall camping and you're gonna be hanging around camp quite a bit, then you're also gonna need warmer clothing. If you normally just bring a puffy jacket as your insulative layer, then I'd consider adding fleece pants and a fleece sweater. My favorites are a couple from Decathlon, which are very budget friendly and very warm while still being lightweight. And if you run very cold, then you can consider upgrading your puffy jacket. This is just the Decathlon Trek 100. And you could pick up something like the Decathlon Trek 900, which is a very warm down jacket. I use this in winter time, but for some people who run cold, then this may be a good option for fall. Something that isn't from Decathlon, and I don't think they carry anything like this, are my slippers. So I like to bring camp slippers. These ones are from Mountain Equipment Co-op. You can also grab some from Baffin. I'll have links in the video description. And if it's cold at night and you're sitting around camp, having some insulation on your feet in addition to whatever your socks are is, is really nice. Nice little cushy thing. And when it's cold out and it's getting dark early, you're probably gonna be spending time around a campfire and just hanging out with your friends. Which brings us to the next thing, and that is what to do for fire. In the summertime, I don't really have fires, to be honest. I just find that they're unneeded and I'm usually hiking longer and then getting to camp, whereas in fall and winter time, I'm spending more time hanging around camp and going with friends and whatnot. So I'm more likely to have fire. And for that, there's a few tools that I bring. First up is a hatchet. So I have two hatchets here. This is the Fiskars X7. 
And this is a very, very nice hatchet. I love this. It's lightweight as far as hatchets go and very effective. But if you're looking for something a little bit more budget friendly, I picked up this one from Lexabon. This is just a little bit of a smaller version. They make one that's the same size, uh, 14 inches. And from everything that I've tested with it so far, it works very well. It may not just hold an edge quite as well as the, the Fiskars, but durable and functional. So if you're looking for a more budget friendly option, then uh, Lexavon makes some, some good hatchets as well. Probably the most important thing for having a fire and making a fire, other than a lighter or something to start the fire is a saw. And this is the famous Silky Pocket Boy. This is a super effective saw. I love this thing, it cuts through logs like butter. The Silkies are a little bit more expensive than some of the other saws out there. I do have a budget option for you, and this is the Florigard. So this is actually a really nice saw too. I have only used it a couple times, but so far I've been very impressed with its cutting ability, as well as it's just kind of how it's been put together and its construction. The last two pieces that I bring for fire starting is a knife. So this is an Openel knife, super lightweight, very sharp, budget friendly. So I use this in order to cut little pieces of kindling in order to start the fire. If you're not bringing a hatchet, then definitely bring a knife with the saw. You can use the hatchet to, to scrape files of, um, of wood in order to start the fire. And then I also bring fire starters. So these are little fire starters that you break apart and then you light and they last for about three to five minutes and they just make starting a fire so easy. It's crazy how easy it is to light these and how long they stay lit. I keep them in my first aid kit with a little ferro rod and they light with just one spark. One little spark hits them and then they're getting lit. It's best fire starters that I've come across so far. Some of the other gear that I bring when temperatures drop, we get into fall. First up is a stove with a regulator. So in the summertime, I use a BRS 3000 stove most of the time. It works great in warmer temperatures, but starts to lose its ability to function properly and put out a good flame once you get below about five degrees Celsius and start approaching that freezing level. A stove with a regulator like the MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe here is gonna operate in lower temperatures much better by regulating the fuel that goes through the burner. And I've taken this stove down to minus six degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's worked very effectively at those temperatures. So if you are getting down into fall temperatures below freezing or around freezing, then a stove with a regulator is really nice. You're not gonna get that really sputtery flame that you'd get with an unregulated stove. In the fall, I still bring a filter. There's no snow yet to melt and my Filter of choice moving forward, especially in cold temperatures, is the Platypus Quick Draw. Something I really like about the Platypus Quick Draw is that it closes up really easy. So it has a cap on one end and then a little bit of a lit snap lid on the other end. So before I go to bed, I make sure to grab my filter and stick it inside my sleeping bag because if your filter freezes, those water molecules that are inside of it are gonna turn into crystals and then shred the filter membrane that keeps you safe and away from Jardia and bad situations. The other thing that I bring is powdered soap. Liquid freezes and if you're hanging around in freezing temperatures or below freezing temperatures, your soap is gonna freeze. I've experienced this, it's very annoying powdered soap doesn't freeze, is also lighter, and I find just a little bit cleaner and easier to use. The last thing that you're gonna need in order to store all this extra gear is probably a bigger pack. Unless you have a decent sized summer pack, you're gonna need to get a bigger one. For me, I like to use a smaller ultralight pack in the summertime, so once fall hits and winter hits, I'm getting a bigger pack, and my personal favorite is this frameless pack from Waymark Gear. This is the through. It has really good capacity. I can take this winter camping and fit all my stuff into it, but it's still very lightweight and carries weight well. If you do have really bulky gear, you might need something with a bit more capacity into that 55, 60 plus liter. But if you have light, lighter weight gear and you're not taking the kitchen sink, then something like this would be perfect. And it also, work, it also works really well as a summer pack. For a lot of people, they use this as their summer pack. For me, I just, don't carry quite as much in the summertime, so this is my full pack. If you're all set for fall camping and you're curious about what gear you might need for winter camping, then go check out a video I'll post right up in the corner there with all the gear that I bring on winter camping trips. I'm in the Cayenne Rockies, it gets cold, so this is a very robust list and it could definitely give you some good ideas if you're looking to get out for wintertime backpacking or camping trips.